friends, it's Christy. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be making a card using the new Hello Bluebird Next Door Gnomes and Garden Party. So I've stamped out my images on Nina Solar White cardstock with Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink, and I'll be coloring with my Copic markers. I tucked a piece of pattern paper underneath my cardstock because I'm going to be using that as my color inspiration. And I'm going to start with my little gnome's skin. So for both of them, I'll be using E000, E00, and E11. But I'm going to show you how to get two different looks using just those three markers. So I started with my little girl and laid in some shadow up on her face behind those flowers and under her hairline with that E11 and then blend it out with the E00 and then use the E000 as my lightest. And then I went back in with that E11 and added a second layer of that and blended that out to give her just a richer skin tone. For my little boy gnome, I wanted him to be a redhead, so I want his skin to be just a touch paler. So I'm going to start with that E11 again and do that um, shadow right up under his hat and then along the sides of his beard and then blending out with the E00 and the E000. But you can see because I only did one layer on him, there is a little bit of a difference there. I used R20 to lay in a little bit of an oval shaped blush on their cheeks and then I blended around the edge of that with the R11. And then for the girl's hair, I'm using E51, E53, and E55. I really love this combo because it's also very buildable. You can go from a light blonde to kind of a medium brown with just the, these three markers, just depending on how you layer them. So I'm starting with that E51 and just kind of um, mapping out where I want my shadows to go. And then I'm going over that with the E53 and then darkening that up with the E55. Basically, I'm just adding that little bit of uh, darkness to the bottom edge of her hair and then a very thin line up under her hat so that I still have some room for all three of those colors. I'll blend back down in the reverse with that E53 and then fill in any remaining white space with that E51 so she has a nice shiny highlight. While I have those markers out, I decided to also color in the Boy Gnome's boots. So I used the E53 to add a little shadow in the crease on the top and then blended that out with the E53 and then the E51. I always like to use each marker combination at least twice on the card if possible, just to add some continuity to the card and the overall color palette. And this is going to be my one exception today. I, Like I said, I wanted to make the Boy Gnome a redhead, and I just couldn't find another place to use this combo, so this is the only place it's going to appear here. Um, but I used R21, R23, and R27 for him. And just like I did with the girl, I started with my lightest shade. I laid in that R21 and kind of mapped out where I wanted my darkest colors to go. And then I began to build up that shade with the R23 and then also laid in some R27. It was especially difficult for his hair to get that <laughs> combo in there, all three of those shades, because it's such a small little bit of hair that's poking out from under his hat. But I did manage to get a little bit of all three of those marker shades in there. Um, and I definitely did on his beard as well. So I'm just filling in with that lightest shade, the R21. The next combo I'm using is B91, B93, B95, and B97. Now don't ask me where gnomes buy their jeans, but this combo was just perfect to match with those blue flowers on the background pattern paper, so I had to use it. I actually just used the darkest three shades for his pants. So I laid in the shadow with the B97 and blended out with the B95 and then added a bit of that B93 for the highlight. And then on the little girl's dress, I am going to use all four of those shades. So I'm laying in some shadows again with that B97 and blending out with the B95. 
and then I will take that even further with that B93, but I'm going to save a little bit of room on the bottom edge of her dress and also right up on her collar for that B91. And then I also wanted the bouquet in her arms to match with all the different colors that are in the flowers on the pattern paper. So I'm going to pick a couple of those to be blue. I'm starting with the B95 as my darkest for those and then blending out with the B93 and then filling in with the B91. And then I'm going to go back with that B97 and dot in the center. For his little sweater, I'm going to use YG61, YG63, YG67, and G99. So I'm starting with that G99 and laying in some shadow on the outside of his body that's going to help him look nice and round. I also added just a touch of shadow on the part in the center and then on the underside and in the crease of his arms. And then I'm blending that out with the YG67. And then I'm going to pull that toward the center even farther with that YG63, but just saving a nice highlighted space for that YG61. So I'm just carefully going over the edges of each of those marker shades to break up any harsh lines and get a nice blend. Since this is supposed to be fabric, I want it to be nice and soft and almost fuzzy looking since it's um, probably a knit sweater. And then I'm going to also color in all of the little leaves in her bouquet with these shades. So once again, I'm just starting with that G99 and simply dotting that color in real quick and easy so that I can squeeze all four of those shades on once again and get some really uh, high contrast on those leaves. Off screen, I'm also going to color the grass that is under the mushroom cluster down in the bottom right corner. And then I'm moving on to my red combo for the Boy Gnomes hat. I'm using R24, R29, and R39. So because he's facing completely forward, I'm going to continue with that center light source that I've been using so far on him. So I'm going to add that R39 on both sides of his hat. And again, that makes it look nice and round by having the dark colors on the outside edge. It makes it look like it's continuous. And then having that highlight in the center, it really just pops the images off the page. So then I blended out with the R29, and then I'm going to fill in with that R24. And I did add just a tiny bit more shadow on the top of his hat on the right hand side just because it was curved a little bit there just to kind of accentuate that movement of the hat. And then I also am going to use these shades to color in the little girl gnome's boots. I thought that would be a fun fashion choice for her. So um, yeah, I just colored them the same way that I did the boy gnome's boots just with the red combo. I'm going to pull in the R22 and do a few more flowers in her bouquet, starting with the R29 as my darkest, and then I'll blend out with the R24 and fill in with the R22, and then go back with that R39 and dot in any little centers that are showing. And off screen, I'm also going to do the large mushrooms and the ladybug. Um, there was so much coloring to conquer in today's video that I thought I would just mainly concentrate on those adorable gnomes and um, just do some of the side images off screen. So I'm moving on to the little girl's hat and I'm using Y11, Y13, Y15, and Y17. And because she's facing a little bit to the right, I did her shadows just a bit different. Um, I did bring them in from both sides, but I also added a little bit of a crease mark over on the left hand side there just to help it look um, like it's kind of slouched down just a tiny bit. So I started with that Y17 and then pulled toward the center with the Y15. Then I used the Y13 and filled in with the Y11. 
And then again, I'm going to use the lightest three shades there to color in some flowers and then use that darkest to dot in any centers. And off screen, I colored in some of the stripes on the butterfly and the caterpillar. The next combo I'm using is R11, R20, and R22. And I'm going to give her some pink flowers in her arms and then also color in the remaining stripes on the butterfly and the caterpillar with this combo. Just real quick and simple, coloring from the bottom toward the top, darkest to lightest. I'll use BG10 to add a little light shading on her apron. And then I'm also going to color in the glass of the lantern and add a little bit of shading to the butterfly's wings. For the mushroom stems and the underside, I'm going to use E41, E42, E43, and E44. So I'm starting with the E44 and doing some shading up under the mushroom cap and down the right hand side of the stem. Basically I chose the right hand side because the mushroom is tipped a little bit to the left so it would be cast in more shadow there. And then the smaller one would also have a shadow cast by the larger one on the right hand side. And then I'm blending out with the E43 and then I will use the E42 to take that color even further but I'm going to save some room for that lightest shade, the E41. And then off screen, I am actually going to color in the other two groups of mushrooms completely with these shades. I just thought, um, I just wanted the one bright red one because I wanted your eye to be drawn mainly to the gnomes and the bugs and not so much to all the other mushrooms. So I'm going to finish up the coloring by using W3, W5, and W7 to color in the lantern and then also to finish off the ladybug. So I'm just using that W7 on the right hand side and then blending out with the W5 and then finishing with the W3. And then I'm going to grab a black Sakura jelly roll pen and go over any of the eyes that are open. So basically everybody except for the little girl. This just makes them extra bright and shiny and really makes the images come alive. And then I'll trim all of these images out with the matching dies. For my cardstock, I am using an eight and a half by 11 sheet and cutting that down to eight and a half by seven. And I'm doing that on the green panel as well, but I will um, only be using the spare piece of cardstock for that one today. And then I just scored at three and a half for the blue piece, because that's going to be my card base. And then the green piece, I am actually going to die cut with the Lawn Fawn slimline stitched hillside borders. So I'll line that up on the green border, which is um, actually Lawn Fawn's Noble Fur cardstock. I ran that through my die cutting machine. And I also ran the Gallery Frame 5 from Hello Bluebird through with more of that blue cardstock, which is MFT's Snow Cone, and then also a piece of that pattern paper that I used as my inspiration at the beginning. I'm going to add some glue to the inner portion of that die so that I can add my pattern paper over top, and that's just gonna help it have a little bit more stability since the lines are quite thin. I just wanted it to be a little bit more substantial there. And then I'm going to add the frame back around it and flip it over and tape these two pieces together with a little scotch tape so that I can use them as one unit again. So I just took six tiny little pieces of tape and put them in the four corners and then one on the top and bottom center just to hold it in place long enough for me to be able to add some foam tape to the back of this 
and when I add that foam tape I'm going to overlap the cut edge of those die cut pieces so it will really hold them together. In the meantime I'm going to stamp my sentiment on the outside of the card and I'm using that Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink again that I used for stamping my images and I'm using the sentiment that says there's no one like you and I stamped that down a couple of times to get a good impression. Then I'm going to open up that card base so I can stamp on the inside. And I'm using Lawn Fawn Merman ink. And I'm stamping another one of the gnomes and a little bug and a sentiment that says, hey, know me. I didn't get a good impression at all because these were brand new stamps. So I used my Picket Fence Stamp Scrubby and just clean those off and then I was able to get a much better impression. So I stamped that down a few more times and uh, that way I was able to get nice and dark since this ink does dry back a little bit. I wanted it to be a little bit darker there so it really shows up. By the way, the pattern paper that I used on the inside of that frame was from the Simple Stories Summer Farmhouse Collection. So now I'm going to peel off the release papers from the bottom and centers of that frame and then line that up over top of that green hillside. It was just slightly too long so I grabbed a pair of scissors and trimmed off a tiny bit and then I could um, line that up. I'm using the grid mat on my work surface to get that nice and straight and pop that down over top. I'll add just a little bit of liquid glue to the back of that and also peel off the remaining release paper. And then I will line that up on my card base, making sure that it is just right on all four sides. And then once I'm happy with that, I will press that down into place. Now I'm ready to start adhering my images and I will be using a mixture of liquid glue and foam tape. I'm going to start in the center square with those red mushrooms and put those right underneath the sentiment. And then I'm going to add the small mushroom cluster over on the far right and then the single mushroom over on the left. Next I'll take my little boy gnome and, well I guess he's not a little boy, he's a full grown man with a beard, but anyway, my gnome and I will add him over in the far right corner there. Super cute. And then I've got my girl gnome and I'm going to add her over in the square on the left and I've added both of those with foam tape. So they're kind of pining for each other across the distance there. Um, there are so many adorable gnomes in this set, but these two were definitely my favorite. I'm going to add the butterfly in the top left corner. I just adjusted that large mushroom a little bit first. Um, and then I will take the little caterpillar and put that one all the way over on the right hand side. And then I've got my little ladybug or Kind of looks like an elderly ladybug. He's got a little cane there, he or she. Um, so that one went in the center as well. And I just felt like the top right corner was missing something. So I stamped and colored a little bumblebee and added that to kind of fill in that space. And I really liked how that looked. And that finishes off my card for today. There's another peek at the inside and an up-close look at all of that detail. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I absolutely loved creating this one. I got to use my favorite little gnomes and my favorite pattern paper and even my favorite color card stock. So I had a blast. If you did like it, please be sure to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe and ring that notification bell so you don't miss a thing. I post new videos every Monday and Friday and I will also be posting occasionally on Wednesdays now as well. But if you'd like to keep watching right now, here are two extra videos I thought you might also enjoy. I hope you all have an absolutely amazing day. Bye-bye.